and accelerates healing of many different types of tissues, tendons, ligaments, muscles, the brain, cornea, skin, a lot of stuff. All right, so the keynotes that I wanna hit on for BPC-157. So kind of like the whole metformin story is there's no one single effect of BPC. So, which sometimes makes it difficult to understand when to use it because it's not like there's a one thing that we have to say, oh, because of this, you should be on BPC and it's just one single thing. There's a lot of different things that we can look at to then say, because of this, maybe we should consider BPC. <clears throat> uh, I highly recommend to go back, and, and these are, again, you'll have these articles, but to read the articles, the old school articles on BPC from the early 90s when it was first, uh, when it was first found. BPC comes from our own gastric juice. Okay, so we have BPC in us at all times. It was originally studied in, um, in rats from their gastric juice, but we also have it in ours. It's made synthetically, so we're not taking it from gastric juice to make it into BPC. Um, but the original reason it was studied, it was actually a group of GI docs in, not Lithuania, I'm blanking, somewhere over in the Middle East. Um, they were looking at this, and what they were looking for was they were looking for a compound that what they termed as a mediator of cytoprotection. Basically, they were looking into what are different things that we naturally have in our body that allow our cells to respond to a physical stress and bounce back from that physical stress. And one of the things they stumbled upon was BPC-157, okay? The nice thing about it coming from gastric juice is it's stable in gastric juice. So you can take it orally. It doesn't have to be an injection. Um, in terms of, because this always, I don't know why this one, but gets asked frequently, is toxic side effects from dosing. In the rat studies, the LD50 was higher than 2,000 milligrams per kilogram which when you do the correct uh, math to change that into human dosing, that for an 80 kilo individual, that's a dose of greater than 125 grams. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're taking like 500 micrograms, okay? So really, really safe to take. The worst thing that'll happen if you take BPC is nothing will happen when you spent money. Okay, I don't think there's any documented, actually, I will say this. There is some side effects that have been reported on increased growth of ganglion cysts with BPC, but that was non, not, that was through forums and through non-pharmaceutical uh, like not through a compounding pharmacy, BPC. So I don't think that was an effect of BPC. This ganglion cyst actually started after one time I did BPC about four or five years ago, four years ago. And I, but I don't think it was from BPC. I think it was more of a compounding issue. So I've never heard of it outside of when they used it with a compounding pharmacy, hence why it's important to use a compounding pharmacy so you don't get ganglion cysts. Here's the first study. Uh, actually, technically, this is second. The first one is, uh, I cannot find it, but it's from the same group uh, in 91. But basically, this is the first study. Um, Sikorik, I think that's how you say his name. Oh, Croatia, that's where it was. <laughs> but um, his group here uh, is the main group who has done the bulk of the research, which you also have to be cautious of if all the research on a product basically is coming out of one research group, right? There's not a lot of, hey, this other group confirmed this. There are some studies that it is, but you'll see a lot of the studies 
were done by Sikorik and his group. Okay. In a nutshell, here are some of the things that the research has shown in animal models. Um, there, so in Croatia, I believe it was like 2003 or 2006, but they actually started a clinical trial for BPC for Crohn's disease. I don't know if it was ever finished because I cannot find it. It wasn't. Like I, I figured it wasn't finished because there was no end data that came out, but I just couldn't find out. There was no, I couldn't find any discussion on why. Uh huh. So remember, the first introduction of BPC was not for musculoskeletal healing the way we tend to use it. It was for GI stuff. Okay. So it's found to be an anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory. It regulates the nitric oxide system, upregulates growth hormone receptors in uh, tendon cells and accelerates healing of many different types of tissues, tendons, ligaments, muscles, the brain, cornea, skin, a lot of stuff, okay? Which again, makes it difficult sometimes to be like, well, when would I use this? It sounds like I could use it in everybody, but it doesn't work in everybody. I already have that slide. Okay, so, uh, one of the questions that I commonly get with BPC is, does it matter if I inject it near my injury? Does it matter if I take it orally? Does it matter if I do it intravenously? Does it matter if I do it topically? Because you can do it in all four ways, okay? I'll talk about what the research shows and then I'll talk about clinical experience, what I've seen, okay? So this study here looked at ligament healing in a rat with BPC-157. They gave it either orally in the drinking water, they gave it intraperitoneally, which we equivalate to giving it IV, and they gave it locally. And I should say IV or sub-Q in reality. And, or they gave it locally, so topically over the ligament, okay? The gist of this is that they're, all of them improved healing in their ligament injury but there was not major differences between each group. So orally, in this study, did not have a major difference from injectable, which did not have a major difference from topical. Clinically, sometimes that's the case, sometimes that's not the case. And I think it, I think it comes down to the placebo effect, is the difference that we sometimes see with injectable being better than uh, oral because, remember we talked about this yesterday, earlier today? Yesterday. That the placebo effect is stronger for higher medical interventions. An injection of something is a higher intervention than a capsule. And so some patients, I think, will get a stronger effect of the BPC because of that part of the placebo effect. I still will, for the most part, do oral because oral still works phenomenally well. And it's just easier for most patients to do oral than injectable, especially if they're needle adverse, okay? Except they just give it to themselves once a day. Um, in patients who have GI conditions, again, I think the placebo effect works stronger for the capsule versus the injectable, which is a little reverse of what the research would suggest, but when you think that <laughs> through, patients taking a compound that's going into their gut that's going to heal their gut. So to them, it might be a more local thing, and they seem to do better that way. At the end of the day, what I say is it really doesn't matter which way do you want to do it. Would you prefer injectable or would you prefer oral? And let the patient decide. Sub Q injections, it's like that's my 
weight bearing. <coughs> Nice. Placebo with my brain, but I knew I was taking it and I was still doing it again right. before too. So nice. Those things will happen with patients. Right? Here's a study looking at a traumatic nerve injury in a rat. Basically, they induced an injury, gave them BPC. They either did it, this was the control, topical, IV, or oral. This was the control which was statistically different in nerve healing than this, this, and this. But there was no difference between these three. So again, another study saying, hey, it doesn't really matter which way we give this. It seems that patients heal. It seems that rats heal. Patients. <laughs> study looking at, uh, again, in mice, in a Petri dish, but looking at tendon outgrowth, survival, and cell migration with BPC and without BPC. And you can see here that there was greater amounts of tendon outgrowth in the Petri dish that had BPC versus not having BPC. And you can see that over here as well. So, before we get into dosing, there's not a lot of research in, because again, there's basically no human research, unfortunately. In rat research, there's not a lot of chronic injury research. So there's not a lot of, hey, we injured this rat and we left it for half its life injured and then we started BPC and what happens? It's more of a, we introduce an injury and then give BPC. So where do you think this might come into play clinically in our practice? Right. BPC works really, really synergistically well when we give it in conjunction. So we start it right after patients get an injection. Clinically, that is what I see more beneficial than giving it alone. What exactly? Prolotherapy, PRP, stem cell therapy. Yeah, stem cell. yeah. Is the addition of, because, if, and, and then if you also, you think back to what, B, what they believe BPC is doing, is it's helping the body respond to a stress. Mm -hmm. So if you have a situation where patients in, chronic pain from a chronic injury and you give BPC, they might see an improvement. There's a better chance they will see a synergistic improvement when we introduce a healing stimulus and have the BPC. And I think this, all this research is really pointing at that's where the power of BPC is, not in just starting it on its own, like you could with the growth hormone secretagogues, but starting it in conjunction with a procedure. Mm -hmm.